Okay, hello my people. I uh, hope that the uh, hope that the last video was helpful. In this one, we're gonna kind of do it thematically. Um, uh, let's go ahead and start with this one. Now, it's a rational. It's an irrational structure. So that means I need to ask myself those questions. Um, can I simplify this in order to eliminate the rational structure? And the answer is no. Okay, the answer, uh, I mean, the, the fact is I have a binomial in the denominator. Nothing is going to cancel with that in the numerator. And therefore, I need to go ahead and just, uh, and just deal with it as a, as a rational structure. Now, the second question I need to ask myself is, is the numerator the derivative of the denominator? Or is it capable of being the derivative of the denominator? And the answer is yes. Okay. Now, you might look at that x squared plus 1 in the denominator and think to yourself, my gosh, that makes me think of arctangent. And you would be right. That is the appropriate denominator to think of arctangent. But in this particular case, uh, I basically, if, I, if, I, if this is arctan, then basically there needs to be a 1 up in the numerator. If I identify it as arctan, then I have this I have this x floating around, um, and that just basically there's there's not nowhere for the x to go. Okay, so if I'm identifying this as uh, as natural log, then my u is the entire denominator, my du is two x dx. I recognize the fact that all I need to do in order to create my du is multiply that numerator by two. Uh, and then multiply the whole integral by one half. That allows me uh, to transform this into du over u. Or, you know, if you don't like the du up there, you can call it one over u du. I really don't care. Now, in this case, it's going to be one half natural log of u plus c. And that winds up being 1 half natural log of x squared plus 1 plus c. Now remember, when we integrate using natural log, we need to be ready to plot the absolute value bars around the argument of the logarithm. Uh, the reason that there are no absolute value bars here is the fact that x squared plus 1 can never be negative. It can never be 0 because x squared is non-negative non-negative plus one is always positive, okay? Now, in order for something like this to actually be arctan, it has to be something like this. It needs to be x to the fourth plus one because, the de because this numerator can't be the derivative of the entire denominator it needs to be the derivative of the thing being squared. Okay, and if I have x to the fourth plus one in the denominator, the x squared is being squared to create that x to the fourth. And this actually is a legitimate u substitution problem for arctan. And I get 2x dx. Again, all I need to do is provide the two and the one half and this transforms into uh, du u squared plus 1. So it winds up being arctan of u plus c, or 1 half arctan of x squared plus c. Okay. Now, do you see the relationship between those two problems? Um, basically the original arctan and how it relates to both of those and how I discerned which one was arctan and which one wasn't. Okay. Now, I told you that we were going to work thematically in the midst of this, so let's go ahead uh, and uh, let's do arctan of x over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. Now this one, uh, this one winds up being uh, somewhat like the the arc sine one from the last video. Okay, 
Uh, and it helps to see it uh, in order, basically it helps to pull it apart uh, to see it, okay? If I pull it apart and I basically, I basically just sort of rearrange it, and I can do that because, you know, multiplication is commutative. I don't have to do it in any particular order. I don't have to divide by x squared plus 1. I can multiply by 1 over x squared plus 1 and all that sort of fun stuff. Now, this looks like the derivative of arctan x. So this winds up being my u. This right here, this whole thing is my u. And therefore, I have u du, which becomes 1 half u squared plus c, or 1 half arctan of x quantity squared plus c. And just like the last one, this one is a little difficult to see because nothing is being done to the arctan. It's just sort of sitting out there. Uh, and, to, and, and the hardest thing to do when you're doing u sub is to substitute u in for something to the first degree because you're just not used to doing that. You're used to using it when you have something like, uh, you know, the square root of arctan over x squared plus 1 dx. At that point, something is being done to the arctan. The arctan is actually inside something else. Uh, so it's, you know, I know we talked about, I know we talked about uh, composite functions, and arctan doesn't seem to be inside anything. But remember, it doesn't have to be inside in the integrand. It was inside in the original before the, before the derivative was taken, okay? Uh, so it could have been something squared, which was differentiated, leaving you with something to the first power, okay? Uh, this, of course, would be much easier. I'd identify, you know, I would identify it the same way, uh, arctan of x, and du would be equal to dx over x squared plus 1. It would just transform into u to the 1 half du rather than u du, and you would wind up getting 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c, or 2 thirds arctan of x to the 3 halves plus c. Okay. Now, are you ready for things to get a little weirder? I'm so happy you said yes. Alrighty. Again, dealing with the, with the same theme of arctan, or things that at least look like arctan. Uh, 12x plus 26 dx. And you're thinking to yourself, that does not look like arctan. Uh, and you'd be right for now. So what can we do to this? Well, it's in a rational structure. We need to ask ourselves those couple of questions. Can I simplify it such that the rational structure disappears? And of course the answer is no. Can I, uh, is the numerator the derivative or potentially the derivative, a multiple of it, of the denominator? And the answer is no. I would need a binomial in the numerator and I would need it to be a linear, right? Because a linear is the derivative of a, of a quadratic. Uh, so basically all I'm left with is this either separates out in a weird way or I need to be able to transform it into uh, arctan. And let's go ahead and just play around with it just a little bit. Now I notice that there is a common factor of two in the denominator. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And uh, I see the fact that that leaves me with this. Now, um, x squared minus six x plus 13 is a little bit underwhelming. But I notice that if I look at, look at it this way, that has the great beginnings of completing the square. And if I wanted to complete the square, okay, and I get a perfect square trinomial, that perfect square trinomial could then be factored into a binomial squared. And you would have 
something squared plus a constant in the denominator, and that would basically be arctan. Okay, well, let's ask ourselves, how would we do that? Well, I know that I need to take half of negative 6, which is negative 3, and square it, which is 9. I'm going to go ahead and borrow 9 from the 13 and get x squared minus 6x plus 9, and what's left is 4. That means uh, that I have x minus 3 squared plus 4 dx. Now, I could use the formula, uh, the formula that I showed you the last time in terms of, uh, in terms of arctan uh, integration formula. But I'm, I'm just, I don't, I hate those things. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply both the numerator, okay, and the denominator by one fourth. And when I do that, uh, I have, I'm going to go ahead and actually then, once it's in the numerator, I'm going to pop it outside. So that becomes one eighth, uh, one over x plus, or x minus three, over 4 squared plus 1 dx. And what I should have done is I actually should have left this as 1 fourth uh, because now I need u to be identified as what is being squared and my du winds up being 1 fourth dx. Okay, 1 fourth dx and there you go. That means that I have one half du u squared plus one, and that leaves me with arctan of u plus c, or one half arctan of x minus three over four plus c. And there we go. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, sorry, one thing that I did wrong. This isn't a four, this is a two. Sorry, because because it's squared, the four transforms into a two, uh, but that, that isn't a huge deal. Leave this as two, and this becomes one fourth, uh, and this is one fourth, sorry. Uh, and that's a two, but you get the idea, okay? Uh, if you wanted to do it by means of the formula, uh, and the formula has lots of U's and A's and <clears throat> stuff like that. Here, let me get the book out and we can take a peek at it. Uh, it's in the back. Um, it's, on, it's on reference page uh, six. Okay, it's this one right here. Okay, uh, and U, of course, is your is your uh, expression in terms of x. So basically, if I see the fact that my formula gives me something like, oh uh, gosh, uh, du a squared plus u squared, uh, I know that I'm going to get one over a inverse tangent of u over a uh, plus C. Now, not the same U, obviously. Uh, I, it's, it's, you know, it's too formulaic. I don't like formulas. You guys know that. Uh, but, I mean, you could do it that way. And if you choose to do it that way so that you don't make the same mistake that I just did, then by all means, you know, uh, get down with your bad self. Um, last problem for this particular video, uh, and this is a tricky one. Let's say I have the integral from negative 1 to 1 of arc sine x over x squared plus 1 dx. Well, that sort of blends together the ones that we've had in the past. That doesn't make me very happy. Um, so how do I do this? Obviously, uh, if I split it up, that's not going to be helpful. Okay because uh, this, right, this right here, okay, that's the derivative of arctan. This is arc sine, 
So how in the world do I do that? Oh, sorry. I'm talking too fast and I'm not paying attention. I apologize for that. Well, this is one of those ones that actually, um, I'm not even sure if it can be integrated, but especially with the knowledge base that you have right now, you can't integrate this. But you can know the area under the curve because this right here is an even function. This right here is an odd function, odd times even, okay? If you are basically going from negative a to a of an odd function, you know, dx, it's always going to be zero because of the symmetry, okay? Uh, think about it this way. If I have a function that basically does this and that has symmetry and I'm going exactly the same, my, my limits of integration are exactly the same to the left as they are to the right, this negative area is going to match in terms of absolute value that positive area and will cancel out and give you zero. Uh, so here's the thing. It's one of those you don't necessarily, and, and these don't happen all that often and they don't pop up with, with great regularity, but sometimes you actually don't have to take the integral to know the integral, okay? Uh, and that brings us, uh, yeah, brings us to about 17 minutes. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I mean, I wanted to sort of do one where we basically just did different iterations on similar functions. And, um, and I, I hope that that has been instructive because it's especially instructive, I think, when the form of integrals looks similar or is of the same variety, but you wind up taking different strategies and, and they wind up actually being different functions uh, when, you actually do, when you actually do the integration. But, alrighty, um, we'll probably have about two more videos. Uh, I'll bring this one to a close. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, just like the last one, if you have any particular questions on any portion of this video, please do uh, bring it up when we come together on Tuesday or shoot me a message. Uh, inside Teams, and I will address it uh, just as soon as I can. Bye, guys.